What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today we are diving into the top eight open world RPGs that you can get lost in in 2022. Now these games range from science fiction to fantasy to post-apocalyptic survival. There's something for everyone in this list, but the one thing they have in common is that they all come with a massive world to explore. Now, before we get too far, I did want to say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and I'll have a message from them here shortly, so stick around for that. But with all of that out of the way, let's get this list started with an upcoming game that I think fans of Lineage will enjoy, Throne and Liberty. So if you remember like 10 years ago, NCSoft teased Project TL. Well, this project has actually evolved beyond the Lineage IP and has established itself as a standalone title called Throne and Liberty. So this is a MMORPG and it describes itself as a next generation experience with an incredibly detailed and immersive world. Now, one of the things they've really hammered home during interviews is how much the world and the environment will affect gameplay. For instance, wind is going to be able to change the course of battle in terms of magic and projectiles. The example they gave was you have a lightning bolt skill. When it's sunny out, lightning bolt just deals damage to one enemy. But when it's rainy and all the enemies are wet and you use lightning bolt, it's actually going to turn into a chain lightning skill. It's going to hit everything in an AOE. So their thought process here is they want players to be more strategic and they want things to be a little bit more predictable or unpredictable depending on what environment you're currently in. Now, beyond that, you also have some variety when it comes to revisiting old areas. One thing they talked about was if you go through and clear out enemies in an area, the next time you go through, there might be completely different enemies there. Like if you kill all the wolves, then the goblins move in and you got to clean the goblins out. So these are all things that they believe will create a next generation experience. Now, this game does have a different focus than previous lineage games. So according to the developer, this one doesn't have a hardcore focus on PVP content, but rather a healthy mix of raid and dungeon content mixed with open world PVP in certain regions. So you can expect some really interesting and engaging boss fights from what we've been told so far. And lastly, we do have a pretty unique mechanic that's going to replace mounts in Throne and Liberty. Instead of going and purchasing a brown horse, you're going to actually turn into animals depending on what you need. So if you need to fly, then a bird's gonna be your answer. You'll turn into an eagle maybe. How about swimming underwater? Then you're probably gonna be a seal or a fish. And I really like this. It's a different way to approach an old and tired system. So kudos to Throne and Liberty for actually bringing something a little bit more engaging to the table, especially if you play a class besides a druid. So if this sounds interesting to you, keep an eye out for it. Throne and Liberty is set to launch later this year. Now, our next game is one that fans of Genshin Impact will enjoy. This is Tower of Fantasy. So Tower of Fantasy is an open world RPG from Level Infinite that claims to have a massive world full of rich storylines, deep customization, and incredible graphics. So this sounds like basically every other open world RPG announcement we've heard over the past 10 years. So let's check out some gameplay and screenshots to see if this is really what we're going to be seeing at launch. So Tower of Fantasy lets you run, swim, and soar through its world. You can explore towers, dive into lakes, and it's all seamless from what we've been told so far. And we know there's going to be a multiplayer mode as well, so you can all enjoy all of this with a friend or two. So it's always good to bring somebody else along to either suffer with you or be victorious with you. Now, when it comes to combat for the game, we do have some interesting twists that Tower of Fantasy brings to the table. The combat itself is very fast paced. It's action combat, right? You can use skills and all that fun stuff. But you also have an ultimate mode during combat called Simulacrum Mode. And this changes you into a weaponized version of yourself. Now, I'm not sure if this is like a Gundam style transformation, but I would imagine this is something that is going to help you decide who you want to bring with you in your party. And speaking of, this game is very similar to Genshin Impact. You have all kinds of different heroes to unlock. You have different ones to adventure with. Each one has strengths and weaknesses along with their ultimate ability or their simulacrum mode to help deal with bosses. Now, this is all I've been able to gather so far from articles and gameplay. So it might change between this video and launch. So please just be aware of that. But Tower of Fantasy is currently taking signups for closed beta and will be launching later this year. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that today's content was being sponsored by Squarespace. So I really wanted to take a moment to talk about all of the cool things you can do with their platform. 
So as you all know, I'm always looking for different ways that I can present my content to make the whole kind of viewing experience as easy as possible for you guys. So with Squarespace, I have quite a few different ways to do this and it's super easy to set up. And I actually used Squarespace for my own business a few years ago and it was a really, really painless process. So you can get started by heading out to squarespace.com forward slash Vulcan to save 10% when you sign up. Now from there, you can select from tons of different templates. That way you can hit the ground running. Or if you're someone who really likes to be in the process, you can build it yourself from the ground up by choosing the blank template. That way you can start from scratch. So I'm gonna give you all a kind of live look at how my website is coming along. So far I have a video wall, which is a really cool feature. I'm able to embed all of my videos directly into the web page. That way you guys just have to click, watch, and then can move on to the next one. This creates a more kind of one-stop shop experience for everyone. But one of the coolest things that I found was the upcoming events page. So this lets me add date and time events. That way I can provide a game release calendar. That way it keeps everyone updated on what games are coming out and when. That way you can plan ahead if you want to take any days off. And you also know exactly what I'm covering on the channel ahead of time. Now lastly, there is a way to sell on-demand videos or classes. So if you're someone who really wants to get into teaching or maybe wants to sell classes or workout videos, this is a really great way to do that. You can show off a little bit of the video, you can add a description, and then you can let viewers pick and choose which ones they want to purchase. It's a great way for those of us who want to sell services, but also want to expand their reach. So all of this is just the beginning, right? There are lots of other things in Squarespace that I'm gonna check out and discover as well. But if you want to learn more, head out to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then once you're ready to dive in, go to squarespace.com forward slash Vulcan to save 10% on your first website purchase. Now let's go ahead and get back to the video. Now our next game is called Embers Adrift. Now this is a PVE MMORPG that puts a heavy emphasis on group-based gameplay, exploration, and community. But if you're a solo player, don't get discouraged because this game does aim to help bring groups of solo players together and forge new relationships. So this game looks to weave together a modern online world with tabletop RPG aspects. Things like active dice rolls, stat checks, and challenging enemy encounters. Right? This isn't an MMO like World of Warcraft, so you're not going to be able to group up 20 enemies and just AOE them to death. Instead, you need to be strategic and use wits to overcome each battle. And you need to think through how you want to kit out your character. For instance, if you have poison on your blade, you actually have to bring poison with you to apply that buff. It doesn't just come out of thin air. And in order to get poison, you have to go kill spiders. And killing spiders is going to give you poison glands that then you can use as reagents. So all of this is something that used to be available in older games, but has since kind of moved out of the modern gaming world. Embers Adrift aims to bring this back together, and honestly, I couldn't be happier. Now you might be wondering, what does the world of Embers Adrift look like? Well, it's set in a low fantasy realm, meaning that there are lots of real world enemies, things like wildlife, but there are also magical enemies like the Ember Bear. Now, having played this one in a few closed sessions, it's been a really fun experience. And I think if you're someone who enjoys Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons, Warhammer Fantasy, then you're going to enjoy the slower pace this game brings to the table. Embers Adrift is currently in closed beta and you can purchase a key on their website. They will also be launching later this year. Now we all know the next one, the newest upcoming game from Bethesda, Skyrim in Space, Starfield. Now this game looks to bring a whole new element to the formula that's pumped out multiple Game of the Year winners. This is actually the first new universe that Bethesda has crafted in 25 years, and they plan to make it something to remember. So this game is described as an open world, or I guess open universe RPG set in space where the opportunities for exploration are endless. Now you will have multiple factions to start and interact with from the pirates of the Crimson Fleet to the fluid lifestyle of the Freestar Collective. There's a unique experience to be had with each one of these. Now we don't know too much about the gameplay elements of Starfield, but what we do know is that you'll be able to explore and visit a ton of different planets. You have places like Neon, which is the fishing colony addicted to a drug called Aurora. You have New Atlantis, which is a huge metropolis with all walks of life. And then you have Aquila, which is a colony where you're pretty much free to do whatever you want. Imagine like no rules 
chaos type of place. But surprisingly enough, everyone just kind of manages themselves. So that's all we know so far about Starfield. But like I said, if Bethesda is behind this, honestly, just <laughs> I'm very interested. It's going to be curious to see where this thing lands and what we ultimately end up receiving when Starfield launches on November 11th, 2022, exclusively for Xbox and PC. Now, our next game is one that burst onto the scene last year and then suddenly just evaporated and went quiet. They wanted to continue working on their game, and that one is The Day Before. Now, this title is an open-world survival MMO set in a post-pandemic America overrun with flesh-devouring infected and survivors that are killing each other over other resources. So it's like DayZ almost. Now, your character wakes up with no memory, and you're basically looking for answers. Where am I? Why am I here? What happened? And this reminds me a lot of The Division in a way, but instead of bandits and militia, you're fighting the infected. You're going to need to scavenge through cars, houses, and skyscrapers to find materials. That way you can craft new things in order to survive. Now, they really honed in on their vehicles in the game, which is kind of interesting. They are very proud of their vehicles. I guess they're incredibly detailed and they're realistic, and you can use these as methods of transportation and exploration. You can also use these to come and go from your colony of survivors that are trying to restore society. Now, this game released a gameplay trailer last year, and while it looks fantastic, we don't know when we'll actually be able to get our hands on it this year. So keep your eyes peeled, keep your ears open, because honestly, I cannot wait to see more of the day before. Now, next, we're talking about a game that takes the voxel art of Minecraft and expands it into an open world RPG filled high and low with places to explore, loot to find, and items to craft. Now, the premise here is that the world of Terravit was perfect. It was a colorful, peaceful realm until the Demon King arrived and began wrecking havoc and unleashing chaos. And it's up to you to stop him. Looking through the game features, one of the big ones that they detail is a completely customizable character. You can create the perfect look. If you want to be Goku or Nezuko, you can be Goku or Nezuko. It's 100% open. Now, the world itself is one that you are going to create. You're going to choose how large the world is, the balance between land and sea, and then the game will generate a new server world for you and your friends to explore together. And speaking of, there are bosses to defeat, there are castles and fortresses to conquer, and there are resources to gather. Now, because the world is so large, you will need a good way to get around. So Terravit gives players a paraglider, a hookshot, and vehicles like the airship and the boat to travel around in. So overall, this one looks like it really wants to capitalize on the void left by Cube World to really give players a huge, ever-changing voxel world to explore. Terravit is coming to PC sometime in 2022. Now let's move on to a classic shooter returning in a new form, and that is Stalker 2. This game was one of the first open world PC games I played as a kid, and I was just so excited when they announced the long-awaited sequel because I made such good memories and had such a fun time playing the first one. So Soccer 2 sends players back into the heart of Chernobyl to experience a one-of-a-kind game featuring immersive sim and horror combined with the excitement of a first-person shooter. If that's not a, like, 100% marketing tagline, I just, I've never read one. So that is 100% what they have on their website, and it is, it's, it's there, it's crazy. So the premise is you're a stalker. You're an individual who enters dangerous areas in search of relics to then sell for profit. And you get swept up in a narrative that takes place in a post-apocalyptic area called The Zone. Now, the game has all the fixings to be a really fun time. It has a huge world full of secrets, battles, things to gather that way you can build your character. But you also have a multiplayer mode and official mod support so the community can continue supporting the game even after the developers move on. And this is what's made other open world games so successful, having official mod support. So I'm very, very glad that Stalker decided to go that route. Now, the game does have a launch date. Stalker 2 is set to launch December 8th, 2022. Now, our last game is one that comes from a familiar name in Aaron Flynn, who had worked on Mass Effect at BioWare, and that is Nightingale. This game immediately caught my attention when it was first revealed because it had all these like weird kind of creatures, realm walking, and it seemed to really just combine that fantasy and magic element that I really, really like to play. So the game sends players into a gas lamp Victorian era where humans have access to magic, which was given to them by the Fae. 
and the humans used this magic to make life easier, but they also used it to access other realms to then harvest their resources and explore and do all that fun stuff. Well, one day the portals to other realms just stopped functioning and this left a lot of realm walkers stranded in whatever realm they were in, whether it was one that's hyper dangerous or whether it's one that's just kind of like low key and chill. So now they have to find their way back home. Now the game sends you on a journey to return to the city of Nightingale to figure out what happened and why the portals stopped working. So Nightingale is a first person game featuring guns, magic, and melee to survive the harsh worlds that you will find yourself in. Now these realms are home to a variety of creatures. Some can be bargained with, others have to be dealt with. But the overall experience that Inflection Games is aiming for is this is a game where decisions matter. So do you want to avoid conflict altogether by offering something to this NPC or this enemy? Or do you withhold that offering and just see what happens instead? Maybe they'll go away. Maybe they'll come destroy your camp. We really don't know. And that is what uh, Inflection Games is really kind of capitalizing on is those different outcomes and the consequences and results of the actions and choices that you make. So they want it to be known that there are also multiple ways to approach every situation and it's not always black and white. So some of the answers might not be extremely obvious and others will be. Now, one of the core mechanics of the game is building your base. So you're going to need to gather resources to build, enhance and fortify your base against assaults from the bound. Now, the bound are these kind of mimics of humanity. They're very twisted. They attack humans on site and they occupy every single realm. So that is all we know so far about Nightingale, but this one is definitely going to be a staple on my channel once it launches later this year. So that's it, folks. Those are my top eight open world RPGs coming in 2022, and I could not be more pumped. This year has been stacked so far with incredible games, and honestly, these ones are just icing on the cake. Really, you know, if we look at years and games, we really look for like one or two big launches. This year has had tons. I mean, we're in March right now at the time of this video, and we've already had multiple, multiple games come out that would have been like the game of the year um, in any other year. So it's just, it's crazy. But anyway, which one are you most excited for of this list? Or is there one that you're really pumped for that didn't make the list? Let me know in the comment section below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. This has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you next time.